It is a great pleasure for me to be showing you some pictures of the first buds, spikes of my Stanhopia. I'm saying Stanhopia because I only have one, even though I have two. Well, my story with my Stanhopia is documented in two videos of last year, where I wanted my setup to be all cute and look pretty and still be effective. And that was an epic fail. So I grew a Stanhopia for two years and I lost approximately eight spikes because my experiment didn't work out. I would say never put lava rock on the base of a basket with a Stanhopia. So these are the images that have happened in the last week. And suddenly I had Stanhopia blooms in my collection and the first time ever in my orchid growing career. And yes, I call it a career because it takes a long time to grow and mature an orchid and as a grower also to mature as a grower and figure things out. But eventually you get there. And here they are, my two Stanhopias, which is actually one. I am very thankful to Michael McCarthy for giving me the ID. Very much appreciated. And I thought what I'm going to do today is try and put her on camera and film this because I have several stages development of spikes and blooms going on and I just wanted to stand very close to the stands and enjoy the fragrance, even though I don't have to be this close. I can smell this orchid if I'm sat at my desk in the other room with walls between us, despite terrace doors being open. I have this massive, massive cloud of big red cinnamon chewing gum, if that makes sense. But it, it's a brand I used to enjoy in the States, and that is what this reminds me of. And it's constant and it's permanent. So really quickly, on the right there is a spike going over. First spike ever for my stan, and that was four buds. Gorgeous, amazing, and those were the images I was showing right at the beginning of the video. They're going over and they lasted visually probably the perfect was four days and then bit by bit they started to decline and then bleed the colors into each other becoming like a pink blush and now they're all pink and going downhill. I am inclined to cut that spike off because number two is already making a move with three buds only. And I say only, I should be grateful. I even got one spike to finally develop, but knowing what the other one did, that one grew three buds. And I will try and explain why. From my observations, I'm anticipating that this spike here will actually open tomorrow. This spike, I came down this morning and it opened overnight as well as, let me get up here, these two blooms, the buds that I put on a community post, where I was guessing two more days, and no, I was wrong, next day. So this opened this morning when I was down, it was already open, and this bloom was still a bud, and then I just happened to have another little look-see while I was having coffee, I looked up, and it, in front of my eyes it went poof, and opened, I was like, oh, like this. I almost spat my coffee out. <laughs> I will forgive this orchid for wasting my coffee if that had been the case. But you can see that the spike itself is coming, excuse you, coming out of the base of the pseudobulb from within the orchid. So it didn't actually need to come through the side. Uh, let's go to this one over here because in total, this year I will have 16 blooms if I don't break any as I bend over and try to find my way into my blooming alley. But I lost a spike right next to this one right here. And I hope that you can see this one has deteriorated. These two were competing for space. So I nudged them apart a little bit and what I have noticed, and I don't know if any Stanhopia experts will be watching this and can confirm what I'm about to say, but what I noticed was that when you touch Stanhopia spikes as they are just peeking out, developing, and their tip at the base here, you touch that, your spike will fail. At least with this one, because that's what I did there, and I had to cut my basket. 
in order to make sure that at least one of the two would make it. I can't tell if this is in focus, but you can see I had to cut the wires because who knew that this big space open airy basket was not actually big enough for stand spikes. No, A, they have to compete with each other and then B, find a way to quetch themselves right up against the mesh where there's plenty of room left and right. Incredible, a little bit frustrating, I have to say. I was not planning on cutting my baskets for nothing because, um, excuse me, how much space do you need? No, come up right up against the wire. And because I already lost another spike early days, and then I lost a third one. Let me see if I can point it out to you. Right here. Because I didn't want the hob material to restrict it from being able to poke through. And I very honestly, very, very gently pulled the strands aside and promptly it failed. So again, Stanhopia experts out there, is that the norm? That the tips as they grow are so, so sensitive that a touch can make them fail? Because I didn't have the problem with this one. The spike you can see is coming out from that bulb right there, much like the one in the other basket, but it managed to find its way down and through. And we're looking at three buds going to open there. And um, I didn't have to really fandangle that much. I did open a hole in the hob material when I saw it was developing. I really ripped like a hole open before I even had the tip coming in that direction based on the fact that two spikes failed just simply by touching and trying to get them to get through the material and through the baskets. Having said all that, I'm getting carried away, sorry. That's what these blooms do to me. Well, all blooms actually, but yeah, that's, I mean, the camera is even finding, where, where, where should I focus? It's like asking me the question. And I'm like, well, this would be a good place. Look at this, the texture here, it's like getting some plastic toy new, some kind of a squishy, it feels like Play-Doh, but so much smoother. And it almost feels like it's wet, but it's not. But if you have Play-Doh and it's a very, very smooth, not slimy, there's nothing wet about these blooms, but they, that's what they feel like. It's a, it's a plastic feeling. And then the column here reminds me of a squid. I am mesmerized by everything that this orchid is doing right now. I don't think 16 blooms is too shabby after trying to get it right after failing miserably for two years. I say the third year is lucky and considering what this stand has been through in my collection, being ripped apart in a most ungracious and unforgiving way because there was no other way to do it but sheer body weight. And now it's blooming and the fragrance, like I said, incredible. I am right now going full throttle with fertilizer. I'm going with 300 parts per million every single morning. And then around midday, I'm going with just plain RO water and drenching the orchid in the basket, trying of course then not to let it drip too much underneath because I don't want to spoil the blooms, but really drenching it because this orchid is now also in active growth. Excuse you. This is not about you right now. Come here. So there's one new growth already starting and I'm anticipating probably four, if not five more in this basket. And there's another new growth starting in this basket. You can see it, I hope, poking right there. I'm just watching out for the buds to the left of me. Oh, I knew this was gonna be an awkward film, but there we go. Thank you for your patience with me. But there's already a new growth heading up skywards right there. And the same thing, seeing as these are the same orchids, but separated. I'm expecting another four to five growths in this basket as well. Full on, 300 parts per million every single morning. And then around midday, plain RO water, which I then consider a flush. 
And on top of that, if it gets really hot and really windy, again, plain RO water late afternoon. This orchid is now in feast mode. Just one more thing, if you're still here, thank you very, very much. Um, consider this a whole thing about the stands, my update and everything, because it was almost like 12 months ago that I did do the ripping apart of my stands and putting them into the setup. I have noticed one growth didn't make it right here. And that was when I was inspecting the baskets to see if more spikes were coming out. And if I have to intervene with other spikes. And I noticed this growth, which clearly is malformed, and only once the stands have finished blooming will I take them down off their hanging position now and then look around and see what happened to that growth. Why did it fail? Where did it catch? Can I avoid it in future? That's going to be interesting. That'll be a quick update, but you can see how cool it is in there. And that spike is actually coming out from the base of a bulb and extended its way out. And then I had to put like a name tag in here. I didn't want to touch the tip of the spike. And then I just maneuvered it along the length of the name tag so that it wouldn't fail on the blooms because they would have been squashed up against the basket and they wouldn't have been long enough to come out and bloom. So the little curvature in there is me using a name tag to guide them up. Amazing, absolutely amazing. I know that many of you have plenty of stands, have bloomed them several times. For me, it's the first time and that's why I am filming this and having a little bit of a geek out moment and you being here with me, thank you very, very much. If you have any questions, I will link the two videos of last year's carnage down below in the descriptions but any other questions regarding what you see here and now that i can answer in the comments then feel free to ask away i'll be very very happy to elaborate and i'm getting heady and giddy with the big red fragrance that i'm surrounded by fantastic thank you so much for watching have yourselves a wonderful day hope to see you again in the next video please please stay safe and take care bye